Welcome back to the Ninth Gym Program, and today we are continuing the guide series with Eternatus. Now, Eternatus is actually a, an interesting Pokemon, because obviously it, it like absolutely destroys Dynamax Pokemon with its move Dynamax Cannon that does double damage to a Dynamax Pokemon. But currently we're in Series 10, and uh, most formats following this are probably not going to have Dynamax, you know, except for like... You know, more Sword and Shield formats. So, Eternatus is kind of weird in a format without Dynamax, but it actually is still really good. It does still have access to Meteor Beam Power Herb combo, which is incredibly strong in, uh, you, know, you know, on a lot of Pokemon. Things like Nihiligo, the Eternatus, of course, uh, a couple other Pokemon, uh, things like Celesteela. Uh, it's a really good tactic, and Eternatus actually has, like, just insane stats across the board. It's fairly naturally bulky, as well as very fast and an absurd special attack stat. So, honestly, it does a lot, a lot of work right uh four weaknesses on that poison dragon typing being ice ground psychic and dragon which are all admittedly really bad weaknesses you know we have really really big powerhouse pokemon like uh you know shadow rider and landorus that just hit that weakness so hard that it makes it pretty tough for eternatus to really work in this meta uh you know especially like uh, lando and and Shadow Rider are incredibly bad weaknesses to have because they're just, you know, both top 10 uh, Pokemon and one of them is restricted, which is insane um, to be, you know, still a top five Pokemon, maybe top eight contender, um, which is pretty crazy. So, yeah, but we're not talking about those Pokemon. We're talking about Eternatus. So Poison Dragon, uh, of course, is good offensive as well, but it's also pretty solid defensively. Of course, we do have the four weaknesses, but we also have seven resistances, which is really good for this Pokemon. You know, Fire, Water, Electric, Grass, Fighting, Poison, and Bug. That's a lot of resistances so that's certainly good for Eternatus and like I said it's pretty naturally bulky and we can make it to be fairly bulky like we can usually EV out of most like Okos which is cool but um yeah I have two builds prepared one is going to be a more defensive build and the other is going to be a more like offensive build using the uh you know power herb meteor beam strats so uh it's pretty cool let's go ahead and talk about the stats real quick and then we'll move on to those builds themselves so also um by the way this only has the ability pressure you cannot change that which is unfortunate because pressure is pretty medium uh but it's still good like it'll come up sometimes but it's not that crazy right like it's not too nuts it just makes your opponent use uh two pp instead of one so you know and only when it's hit by it like it's just not that good but it's there you know not too bad uh, anyway, these stats are very solid. So HP at 140 and both defense and special defense being at 95 is very, oh, excuse me, very good. Actually, incredibly good um, overall. HP, of course, at 140 is insane, but defense and special defense at 95 is just like fairly good, you know, fairly uh, a little a bit above average, maybe about average for restricted, but it's definitely solid, right? We can slap an assault vest on this or like even invest out of, uh, you know, invest EVs to not get O code. It's pretty good. And then special attack at 145 is just absurdly strong, like actually insane. And after the plus one from Meteor Beam, like we're just doing so much damage. It's insane. Uh, taking big, big Okos, taking big, big knockouts everywhere. You know, a lot of Okos, um, a lot of almost Okos on really, really defensive Pokemon. So it's definitely good. And speed at 130 is very solid. Of, of course, it's not like insane, but uh, with, you know, not too much investment, you can outspeed the base 100 speed tier, which is really good. And you can actually EV it to outspeed things like Lando I as well, and a lot of other good Pokemon in the meta. We'll talk more about that in Speed Tears portion of the video right after the build itself. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the builds themselves. So I actually, like I said, you know, have two builds today. So the first one we're going to be talking about is the Power Herb uh, Meteor Beam combo. And then the second one is a little bit more bulky, a little bit more investment into Bulk and Black Sludge, which is essentially leftovers. But um, yeah, pretty defensive second build. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the first one. So for the first one, we have Power Herb Meteor Beam combo, which is like I was saying, a very aggressive combo. Uh, Meteor Beam, if you don't know, it gives you a plus one into special attack and then a very, very high damage output uh, move that is usually a two turn move. But because of Power Herb, that gets rid of that. It's very similar to the Power Herb Geomancy where you get, you know, the huge buffs, but it takes two turns. But with Power Herb, only one turn. Makes sense. Eternatus utilizes that power herb with Meteor Beam extremely well, being able to fire off a high power beam right off the bat and then gaining that plus one for the rest of, you know, while it's out, 
which is insanely good. As far as the EV goes, we'll talk about that in one second. Let's talk about the moveset. Um, so we have Meteor Beam, Sludge Bomb, Flamethrower, and Recover. I didn't opt to go for Protect on this set, but you can definitely go for that over Recover. It might be better. And even if you wanted to go for just two moves, you could, but I really didn't want to lock myself into only Sludge Bomb, because then you'll run into like a Zacian and be like, wow, this kind of sucks. I wish I could just kill it with a Flamethrower, um, which is, you know, one of the big things about Eternatus is that it can do a very, very competent amount of damage from just a Flamethrower into a Zacian, uh, especially after being boosted plus one by the Meteor Beam, which is hopefully what we're doing pretty close to right off the bat. So that's kind of why Eternatus wants to go for that Power Herb Meteor Beam route, so that we can just take big decisive knockouts after that, um, which makes sense. So I went for, um, you know, two moves other than the Meteor Beam, because Meteor Beam does take two turns after the Power Herb uh, initially sets off. So you don't really want to be locked into only have Sludge Bomb. So that's why we didn't go for Recover and Protect, but you could definitely switch to Recover for Protect as well. You know, great option. Uh, as far as the EV spread goes, I did go for 84 HP, 4 defense, and 20 special defense. Not a lot of bulk investment here. Uh, like I said, this is the build we're really leaning into that offense. So, of course, here uh, for this build, you'll definitely want some answers to think to big Pokemon in the meta. Things like the Lando Eye and, of course, the uh, Shadow Calyrex. We'll talk about a couple counters and stuff to our counters here in a moment. But, uh, yeah, just know that this is not the very, very bulky build. This will have 148 speed, which uh, gets us to 160 nine on the speed tiers which is one faster than uh, what Lando I can get to which is 168 we also outspeed the base 100 speed tiers so 148 speed is a really really good investment into the Eternatus for that so that is definitely good and then I also wanted to just max out the special attack I was seeing a lot of special attacks not being this invested but uh, when I was doing I was running damage calcs and uh, this doesn't allow uh, guaranteed Okos very frequently, but it does push us into range with really good rolls for a lot of things and does take us out of range of being a roll for a bunch of knockouts as well. So I just wanted to go all into that special attack here. And as you can see, we're even modest nature. So it's just an all into special attack build with a good bit of speed as well. And then just pouring the rest into bulk uh, pretty evenly throughout, but a uh, very solid spread. In my opinion, I was liking this a lot. Um, I think it's good. I think it's good. Anyway, that is about it for that build. Um, obviously, we'll get a little bit more in depth in it for the damage calc and uh, speed tiers here in a moment. But let's talk about the second build real quick before we move on. So, of course, the second build has a little bit more of a defensive spread, you know, as you can see there, the 68 special attack uh, instead of 252. So we're definitely, you know, being a little more lenient on uh, giving it bulk and stuff. And I'll explain that in the damage calc, so you know what exactly this came from. But essentially, it's to live an expanding force non-boosted by terrain from a special attack, like a max attack, um, or a max special attack, rather, uh, Calyrex Shadow. So that's kind of the uh, idea around the second build is that's what that HP and special defense is so bulky for is for those things in particular. Also, it makes the Lando Eye a roll, which is uh, obviously not something you'd love to see, but definitely better than just a guaranteed Oko, which you don't want to see at all. So yeah, that, that kind of explains the uh, EVs. Let's talk about it a little more in depth. So 172 HP, uh, I just wanted to do a lot of HP investment in this one and then a lot of special defense as well. And then I just went four into defense because you're wasting if you do four EVs uh, investment spread, you know, just a little into defense. Uh, and then I poured especially 148 back into the speed so we can outspeed that Lando I once again and also the base 100 speed Pokemon. And then I just poured the rest into the, the, into the HP and special defense to the live. And then, uh, yeah, the rest of it is just special attack once, we, once I felt like it was pretty sufficiently bulky, right? So 68 special attack, still doing a lot of damage on a lot of things, but... Um, you still have room to not die immediately from a lot of Pokemon, which is really good. The attacks is Sludge Bomb, Flamethrower, uh, Recover, and Protect. I did go for Recover and Protect both on this set, and then Sludge Bomb and Flamethrower since we don't need the Meteor Beam. Now, of course, you can put Dynamax Cannon on it if you want to. Uh, that can definitely be good. You know, Dynamax Cannon is still your highest uh, damage output special attacking stab move for a Dragon. So that's definitely still, you know, something that uh, you could put on, but I just didn't go for it on this build in particular. I just don't, you know, I just didn't feel like it was necessary. 
Anyway, um, other options we have here is uh, Cosmic Power. So I've, I've been seeing a couple of really cool Eternatus Cosmic Power builds going around. And I think Cosmic Power is actually pretty solid. So, um, you know, I, it's there as an option. I haven't actually tested myself. So that's why I'm not like, you know, didn't make a Cosmic Power build. But I'm sure a lot of spreads can be cleaned up really, really nicely with a good Cosmic Power. Um, you know, getting that plus one in your special attack as well as your special defense. So very, very solid there. Cosmic Power is an incredibly strong option. Um, or it's a uh, defense and special defense, not special attack. What, uh, I said special attack. It's, it's special defense and physical defense. You, you can get a lot of really cool calcs with that. I'm sure. Um, anyway, then as far as items go, of course I said black sludge here for Eternatus. It's essentially leftovers. It's very good, um, for getting back some HP and we have protect as well, but, uh, you do have some other options. So, um, you know, a lot of, uh, attacks that are super effective and doing a lot of damage are taking us pretty low. So I did, uh, say guave berry or any kind of pinch berry for that matter, or even citrus berry could be a good option, but also, you know, your good go-tos here for like strong Pokemon, safety goggles, life orb, assault vest, all good options as well. Some things you want to, you know, maybe keep in mind is, uh, you know, the power herb is really good offensively and the black sludge is really good defensively. So kind of like if you're going towards one of those two routes, probably go for the ones that kind of accentuate that a little better, but these are still really good options, um, to keep in mind. Anyway, that is about it for the builds themselves. Let's go ahead and talk about these synergetic Pokemon in the bottom right corner first, and then we'll move on to uh, speed tiers and damage calcs and single spotlight. So, Rillaboom is um, honestly not like the best pair ever. You know, you do have those uh, ice weaknesses kind of being really big now, but of course, uh, switching the terrain is a really big deal because the expanding force uh, under the terrain boost is going to be killing this Pokemon 100% of the time, and that's really, really bad. Like, it's just killing. Um, which we don't really want to see. So uh, being able to switch that terrain on, like, you know, the drop of a dime is really, really good. And then next we also have Celesteela here. Uh, Celesteela walls out our big threats really, really well. It does a really good job at walling out the, um, you know, Sludge Bomb, Earth Power, Lando Eye, which is really big in the meta. It's also really good against uh, Shadow Rider, which can be, you know, very, very um, problematic for Eternatus. So having an out to both of those is really, really solid. And Celesteela can be a very defensive Pokemon as well. So if you're going for the off of Eternatus build, I would definitely try Celesteela on the team. Um, you can go for something else if you don't want to, um, you know, use Rillaboom because, uh, you know, doubling up on that fire weakness is not always great, but it's still not bad. So, of course, this core does have a couple of problems with, like, you know, do overlapping on weaknesses and stuff, but still a pretty, you know, solid um, core, or at least solid partners for it in, in general. Um, that's about it for the builds, so let's go ahead and talk about some speed tiers. So, as far as speed tiers go, of course, like I said, we are at 169, which is pretty good in the meta. You know, of course, outspeeding that Lando, uh, Landorus, this isn't actually neutral. I had to change the speed tier. That's max speed Landorus. So, uh, just so you know, that's incredibly good. It's at 168, we're at 169. Super good, you don't have to worry about that Pokemon. I mean, I guess if it's choice scarfed, but you don't see that ever, so... Uh, yeah, we probably don't have to worry about that. And then next, we're outspeeding the, ba the base 100s, which is a very, you know, populated speed tier. We have things like Charizard, Volcarona, Zapdos, Zapdos Galar, Entei, uh, Salamence is on that, Regigigas, which probably not without Dynamax is going to be used. But still, um, you know, a lot of really good Pokemon on that base 100 uh, speed tier. And then under that, you know, a lot of other good Pokemon in that 150 to 170 range. Things like Urshifu, Mimikyu, Tepu Lele, Arcanine, Indeedy Male, uh, Landorus Therian. Rotom, <laughs> uh, something I forgot to blink out, uh, but a lot of really good Pokemon in that speed tier. Um, also, not to mention, we are on the same speed tier as Garchomp, so be careful there because, you know, it does have uh, dragon moves pretty typically, so um, definitely be careful there. You will be speed tying, which is not great, but uh, it happens. Anyway, next we have some Pokemon out speeding it, things at that, uh, you know, 170 to plus range, um, which isn't too populated, is definitely kind of popular. Um, you know, we have things like Nihiligo, Kartana, Ninetales, Alola, uh, Tapu Koko, a bunch of Restricteds are in that range as well. Um, you have uh, Dragapult, Regilecki, Faramosa, a lot of Pokemon above it, um, but, you know, a lot of Pokemon under it, which is good. So it's definitely in a good place for speed, but not the best ever but it's, it's definitely good you know with 148 we're outspeeding all these really good pokemon not bad at all uh as far as damage calcs go we have a lot of them so the first five are going to be for the first build and the second build is really like i said just to outspeed uh or to outlive the caloric shadow rider um just the expanding force we'll talk about that um at the end but uh yeah so the first three are going to be offensive the second two 
or the last three are defensive as per usual. So let's go into it. So uh, of course I turned this plus one from Meteor Beam, by the way. These are all plus one from Meteor Beam. That is what that build is really doing. Uh, 252 plus. So max invested plus that well, plus one from Meteor Beam. A lot of damage coming out. Uh, so plus one, I turn this Flamethrower into a Zacian Crown. It is hitting 97.6 to 115. This is obviously a roll, but it's an 87.5% chance, which is an incredibly high roll. So definitely a good roll i mean it's still roll it's you're never gonna get you're not gonna be able to escape that roll but it is a high roll um which is really good so doing a lot of damage to zashian and honestly zashian crown doesn't do too much damage back uh unless it's like sword stand up or um you know behind substitute so it's just taking attacks first like it can obviously be a problem but we do have tools to deal with it really well next we have plus one 252 max uh attack special attack obviously Turn it a sludge bomb into a 252 HP for the special defense assault vest Rillaboom hitting 116 to 139. So obviously taking that big big uh, Oko here guaranteed Oko um, with the sludge bomb. But we do like I said have to already be plus one from the meteor beam power herb combo. Um, but that's still a lot of damage, which is good. Uh, next, we have turn a turn of this into a meteor beam. Uh, with the meteor beam it gets that plus one before it actually fires a meteor beam so this can be the first attack fired off by this pokemon in the game um or you know while it's out into an incineroar this is the default spread the most used on pika licks as well that's probably why it's default um or actually being default on jake white github is probably why it's number one most used on pika Lytics. Uh, anyway, that doesn't matter. 236 HP and 236 plus special defense. We are still hitting 96 to 113. So this is why I went for that 252 uh, investment instead of a little bit, you know, more bulk. Because these are rolls, but they go from like 16.5% rolls to 75% rolls. Which is really, really good. And actually like a relevant amount. Obviously, you try to minimize as many rolls as you possibly can. But this is a lot of damage and a 75% chance. Like... I'd put money on that a lot of the time, so that's like definitely good. I don't condone gambling. I shouldn't have said that, but still, um, we're, we're doing a lot of damage. It's all I'm saying. Anyway, next, um, we've got some defensive calcs. So 252 special attack, life orb, sheer force, Lando, earth power, wow, tongue twister for that attack. Um, into our 84 HP, 20 special defense, so not much bulk. Um, this is the power herb um, offensive combo without much bulk. Uh, it is a guaranteed Oko. I mean, d stay away from that guy. You know, have something like Celesteelo on your team, something that can answer it, but can also just not care about its damage, so you have good defensive switches, uh, so that you don't have to waste your, you know, uh, Sludge Bomb, your your plus one for Meteor Beam, and then just, like, lose to not being able to do anything and getting oko would by Lando and stuff like that. So, um, definitely play around it safely. Obviously, if you read it, you can do a lot of damage, and you can read that, and then uh, you outspeed, so you don't really have to worry about it after, but... Um, that takes some high level play. So um, definitely, you know, be careful. You get O-Code, you know, don't switch this thing into uh, a Lando that might kill it. You know, don't switch it. It's not safe. <laughs> it's not a safe switch. Anyway, um, next we have 252 Special Attack Life Orb, Calyrex, Shadow Rider, Expanding Force, not in terrain. I cannot, um, you know, make this important enough. Not in terrain. If it's in terrain, you're dead. Just don't be in the terrain. Um, make sure to have Rillaboom or something or, or just get it out of there. Either way. Um, anyway, it's 96.4 to 113 damage, which is an 81% chance to Oko. Once again, it is a roll, but it's an incredibly high roll. It's not one that I would want to switch into ever. Um, so just, you know, bad matchups. They're your bad matchups. Be careful of your bad matchups. Next, we have uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider, Expanding Force, same, same calc here, into the Eternatus with more investment. It is just enough to not die. But once again, it's not in the terrain, so be careful. Um, guaranteed to a KO, we're not dead, which is good. But it's still a uh, calc you have to be very, like, incredibly careful around. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that is it for the, those damage calcs. Let's talk about single spot real quick before I end the video. And I, I am going to talk about it real quick because it's pretty basic. It's about as basic as it could be, by the way. Uh, life Orb, Pressure, we're not going to change those stuff. Life Orb could be changed. You could go for a Meteor, uh, meteor Beam Power Herb. But I really wouldn't want you, you know, to get, like, switched into uh, taking that and then, you know, the, you don't do much damage and then you have to switch out. So I just went for, a st like, a straightforward build. Life Orb, doing the most damage. Dynamax, Cannon, Sludge Bomb, your dual stab. We have Flamethrower for coverage. And, of course, Recover here on this Pokemon. Your opponent's switching out. You, you have a turn. You can recover and then you switch out optimally. And then Eternatus is, once again, at the top of its game uh, at peak performance. And then you have Eternatus running again. Of course, this is in Uber's category. So, 
you know, I don't know exactly how good it is in Uber's category, but it's definitely good. You know, you have a lot of really good stats and stuff, and it has a lot of good moves, a good uh, typing. It's, it's good. It's a good Pokemon. So, yeah, that's really about it. And then for the EV spread, it could not get more basic. 252 into speed, 252 into uh, special attack, leftover 4 into defense. You can put this, honestly, anywhere that you're, like, afraid of, you know? Um because it's all very well balanced 140 hp and 95 on both special defense and defense so the four doesn't really make too much of a difference most times but it might it, it, it could definitely come up um and then timid nature just to make it as fast as possible plus speed minus attack uh we're not using attack makes sense anyway that is about it that's all i got for the video today thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed uh in sum up i think eternatus is honestly like a broken pokemon like it's actually so insane but uh currently in the meta we do have a lot of really big checks and counters for it so um uh, know what you're gonna die to you know it makes sense just be careful of those pokemon and you should have a pretty good time with uh eternatus so yeah uh that is it for the video thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed uh have a great week leave a like comment subscribe makes a huge difference it really does uh, goodbye.